if you're advertising in Google Ads, you're probably not just giving Google your money out of the kindness of your heart. You probably have a specific outcome or specific results that you want to get for your ad spend. And there's a lot of different ways that you could go about doing this. And we've talked about a number of these on this channel over the past several years. But there's one thing that I think most experts in the space have come to an agreement on, and that's if you're driving significant number of conversions in Google Ads, you're probably gonna at least wanna try Google smart bidding options like target return on ad spend and target CPA. So Google says that if you wanna use these bidding options, you should probably have 15 conversions in a 30 day period, but I'd recommend not even trying it unless you have double that. So 30 conversions in a 30 day period. But if you do meet those minimum criteria, smart bidding options like target return on ad spend and target CPA can actually drive better results than if you were just to do things manually. And so in this video, I'm gonna define what target return on ad spend is, what target CPA is, and also which one is my favorite for your Google Ads account. If we haven't met yet, my name's Scott Redgate. I'm an online marketing coach. If you wanna save money in your PPC account, make sure to grab my free PPC cost cutting cheat sheet. You can get it at scottredgate.com slash cheat sheet. I'll leave a link in the description below and let's dive in. All right, so let's talk about target return on ad spend and let's talk about target CPA and let's try to do it in a way that's not so boring because while these might not be the most exciting topics to discuss in Google Ads, they're super important. So what we're gonna do today, I'm gonna quickly define them and then I'm gonna share with you which one is my favorite for most Google Ads accounts out there. All right, so both target return on ad spend and target CPA are smart bidding options. So before we go any further, I wanted to define what smart bidding is according to Google. So smart bidding refers to bid strategies that use Google's AI to optimize for conversions or conversion value in each and every auction, a feature known as auction time bidding. So you can think of smart bidding as the opposite of manual bidding. Now, I used to be one of those people that for several years, I was all on the manual bidding train and I avoided smart bidding. But over the past five years, honestly, if you haven't adopted some form of smart bidding, you're definitely behind because Google Ads has gotten a lot better with their AI and understanding who your potential customer is and helping to get a good return on ad spend or CPA for your business. All right, so now that we know what smart bidding is, let's talk about one of the most popular smart bidding options, which is target CPA. And it's not rocket science. So target CPA is an automated bid strategy that's designed to maximize the number of conversions in a campaign while maintaining to aim an average cost per acquisition. So this strategy uses historical information um, and real-time information and signals to automatically adjust the bids in a particular auction uh, based on all of that data. All right, so now that we know what a target CPA is, let me show you what the formula is to figure out your cost per acquisition. So to find your cost per acquisition, you simply need to take your ad spend or your overall cost for a campaign and divide that by the number of conversions. So let's say that you've spent $100 in a campaign and that $100 in spend has helped you generate 10 conversions. Your cost per acquisition for that campaign would simply be 100 divided by 10 and so your CPA would be 10.0 and so your CPA is the actual result of the campaign and then your target CPA is just that it's the target that you want to aim for so if your historical data inside your Google Ads campaign shows that you've been able to get a cost per acquisition of 10 and you're happy with that goal you could simply set your target cost per acquisition to 10 but let's say that you wanna drive a little bit better performance inside a campaign. What you would need to do in this instance is actually decrease your target CPA. So using this example, let's say you've been able to achieve a CPA of 10 and you want to have better efficiency in the campaign, you could decrease that to something like nine or eight and set that as your target cost per acquisition and see if Google is able to achieve that performance target. Now you might be thinking to yourself, well, why wouldn't everyone just set an insanely low target cost per acquisition? And that gets into the dynamics of the ad auction for whether or not Google is actually able to achieve that target CPA that you set. So let's say that you halved this cost per acquisition. So instead of having a 10.0 target CPA, you put 5.0. 
That's essentially doubling the efficiency of the campaign. But what you could see happen in this instance if you do that is that your spend could drop significantly because Google might not be as confident that they're able to achieve that target CPA. So they really restrict your ad to showing to those top of the line potential customers. And so while you're able to potentially improve your efficiency, the quantity of conversions that you've gotten as a result of that move could be significantly decreased. So the quick summary of your CPA is it's your ad spend divided by the number of conversions and your target CPA that you would set in Google ads attempts to achieve that performance target that you set in the campaign. All right, so let's talk about target return on ad spend now, which there's a lot of similarities. So target return on ad spend or target ROAS for short is designed to help advertisers maximize the conversion value that they receive from their ad campaign. And unlike target CPA, which is focused on maximizing the quantity of conversions, this is aimed at achieving a specific return on ad spend, which is typically expressed as a percentage. So getting back to our trusty formulas here, your return on ad spend is simply your total conversion value. And for e-commerce brands, that's typically your revenue divided by your ad spend. And so here's another example. Let's say your conversion value that you've driven from a Google ads campaign is $500 and your ad spend was $100. Well, your return on ad spend in that example would be 500 divided by 100 and then express that as a percentage. So that would be 500%. Now, a common misconception with target return on ad spend is that it's specific for e-commerce brands. If you have a local business and maybe the goal or the conversion of your campaign is to have a lead form submitted or a phone call or something that's not just someone buying a product on your website, you can still use target return on ad spend as a smart bidding option. And the way that you would do this is you would assign essentially a value to each of the conversions inside of your campaign. So let's say that you have two conversion goals. You have a contact us form and then you have another form on your website. And let's say that contact us form is worth twice as much to you as the other form on your website. Well, you could input a conversion value for that contact us submission and have it be a number that's double the conversion value as that other form on your website. And so with target return on ad spend, it wouldn't just be simply trying to optimize for the quantity of contact us form submissions and submissions from the other website. It would now understand that the contact us form is more valuable than the other form. And so it would attempt to drive as much conversion value in that campaign as possible and not just the quantity of conversions. So the question is, which one's better? Which one do I prefer? Well, if you have a super simple setup and maybe you only have a single goal, which is a contact us form submission on your website, you can use either. It doesn't really matter. But for everyone else, that means e-commerce businesses, or if you have a website and your goal is contact us form submissions and phone calls and you've got multiple forms, my recommendation is to use target return on ad spend because it's highly unlikely that all of those different conversions that you have set have the same value to you as a business. And so if you want to maximize the absolute efficiency from a campaign, target return on ad spend is your better option, but understand that you're going to either have to input different conversion values if you're a lead gen business, and if you're an e-commerce business, you need to make sure that you have proper conversion tracking set up because all of the different product prices and your average order value are going to factor in to this target return on ad spend. So in summary, I'm a fan of both target return on ad spend and target CPA. However, if you have more than just a single conversion goal on your website, or if you're an e-commerce business, I would highly recommend you go the target return on ad spend route versus just having a simple target CPA.